And coming up next, we got the second part of Get Your Popcorn Ready Podcast with Randy Moss, special edition. No doubt. Hey, you might want to sit down and get your plate because there's a lot to be talked about and a lot for you guys to listen to. So go get your popcorn ready coming up. Yeet! Next with Randy Moss, second part series. You know, I, let me get back to mine, too. I know this is the podcast with me, but I really got to know this with, with what you just talked about your performance, man, as a fan of the game. You know, I really felt that, you know, there's a lot of staples um, throughout your career that stapled you a first first uh, ballot Hall of Famer. And I, I told people in the interview, I'll tell you to your face on, on, on this podcast, I really felt that you was a first ballot Hall of Famer. And people used to ask me, I think I had an interview the day of about uh, me going in. And I said that, you know, Terrell Owens didn't go in first ballot Hall of Famer as a first ballot Hall of Famer, and it wouldn't shock me uh, if I didn't. And uh, I really mm. thought that I was, and I really thought that you were. And uh, like I say, I'm not blowing any smoke. And, you know, I think just for my conscience, man, because I really felt, you know, I didn't know what it was, but I really felt that you didn't show up to the Hall of Fame because you wasn't a first ballot for Hall of Famer, and I was. And I, I really need you to clear some smoke, clear the air a little bit, bro, because – from an emotional standpoint, I really thought that regardless of what was said throughout our careers, now that we're there, and I think I told you this already, now that we're Hall of Famers, I just I, I just felt more relieved than anything. And, 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 and don't get me wrong, I know from, from the work that you put in, the, the conversations that we had over this podcast, of them not giving you that first, that, that first ballot nod, I understand that. But I just need you to clear the air with me and make sure it wasn't about <laughs> me being a first ballot uh, mm -hmm. Hall of Famer and you not being a first ballot. That's, that's, that's all the question that I have for you. No, I, I think um, <clears throat> what it was, I think the, the first the first the first go around when I was nominated was 2016. That was the first time. And so I honestly I didn't really have any inkling of an idea of really kind of what the Hall of Fame was. Um, I remember being nominated and, and, and going down to NFL Network and they asked me a series of questions and uh, a series of questions about, you know, what it's like, what do you think about it? And then they were showing a bunch of highlights. And then I didn't really I really didn't understand what I had just done or what they were promoting until I got back to the house and I started seeing all the stuff on TV about, you know, obviously me being being nominated for uh, for the Hall of Fame. And so uh, once that happened, and obviously the, the first year was in Sanford, my, yeah, the first year that I was up, they had the Super Bowl in San Francisco. And so I was just like, okay, cool. Um, you know, went to the dinners. I went to all the, uh, the function of the events for all the Hall of Famers um, that they had, uh, met, you know, some of the former uh, uh, Hall of Fame, uh, the current uh, Hall of Fame guys uh, that was there. Uh, some of the guys that were uh, being inducted um, or nominated went to all of that. And so just talking to everybody that that I ran into um, at that time, everybody was like, man, they were like, bro, you a shoe in. Like, bro, you a first ballot. They're like, there's no way, you know, you can't be, you know, you don't get in. And so obviously, like I said, fast forward to that Sunday, um, you know, I had an event to go to that, you know, you, the whole process, you got to be in the room by a certain right. time and they're going to have somebody come and knock on your door. And so, um, uh, honestly, like I said, I wasn't really tripping on it. You know, I just kind of just let the chips fall where they fall. Um, and so the, I was rushing back from a charity event. I, I, was, I was playing in a basketball game and I literally, they had to pull me up, pull me away like at halftime, like, yo, you got to get back to the room. You got to get back to the room. They're going to come knock on your door. And so I literally they got, put me in the car to drive because I was I was running and pushing for time just to get back in time to get back to the room um, before they knocked on the door. So it just so happened, as soon as I got back to the room, got into my hotel room, I literally went came in the room, went around the corner, and then somebody knocked on the door. And you know he came, you know uh, David Baker came back and he's like, unfortunately, you know uh, you didn't make it. So I'm like, all right, cool. I didn't think too much of it. I'm like, y'all. So I turned around to my family. I said, I said I didn't make it. And they was like, what? So yeah. So bro, we went to the Cheesecake Factory after that. We, we wow. walked around, walked to the Cheesecake Factory. And so for me, man, 
I just felt there was a, a lot of disrespect based on um, really kind of the, the criteria uh, of, of getting into to the Hall of Fame. Um, and every time that if you if you think about the criteria to get in, I had checked all those boxes. I was yep. uh, at that time second, second and third or fourth or whatever uh, behind you, Jerry or what have you. So I had basically checked all the boxes. Our our stats were pretty much similar. I don't think I was. Uh, yeah, if you look at yeah, Hatch already mentioned that we were so similar. Our, our, our right, statistics right, mm-hmm, right. Are right there. So I'm like, okay, there's no reason why. So again, after that year. Um, the second year comes up and, uh, this year the Super Bowl is in Houston, man. So I'm like, okay, cool. I didn't, I was, I wasn't, I wasn't tripping. I'm like, okay, cool. I didn't make it. So this year, the second year comes, comes about when Houston, everybody was for sure, bro. I mean, I had my people, they done bought balloons, everything they brought to the room, everything, bro. They were just like, bro, they're like, at this point, bro, I'm like, there's no way I can't make it. At this point, I'm like, there's no way I'm not going to make, make the, make the uh, Hall of Fame. Man, I'm I'm at a I'm at a, another charity event. I wasn't in the hotel. Um, I'm on my way back to the hotel in an Uber. I'm in the back because we travel. I mean, we we have my boy Doug and Heather and everybody. I'm in the back back of the of the Uber, and I get the call. And so he basically they basically called me again. Like, yo, unfortunately, you didn't make it. Man, I told everybody in the car, bro, you would have thought, bro, you would have thought somebody died. Like, wow. They thought, they thought I was Everybody playing. out. Bro, they thought I was playing. They said, man, quit wow. playing. I said, no. I said, bro, I'm like, yo, I, I said, they just called me. They're like, I didn't make it. Man, you, I pr- trust me, that was like the longest, quietest mm. Five to ten minute ride back to the airport. Yeah, I, that needs to be an awkward commercial. You know what I'm man. saying? <laughs> and so, man, it never again. Then obviously, you come up, um, <clears throat> then you get inducted. But at that point in time, you weren't up for the Hall of Fame at that point in time, so it didn't really have anything to do with you. Right. It Pre- was more yeah. Right. So it it didn't have anything to do with you at that time. So right. for me, it was more about the process. And mm. basically how they viewed me and basically like 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 Shannon Sharp said, when it came to me, it's like they kept moving the goal line further and further, uh, you know, away for me to make it to the, into the into the Hall of Fame. So, you know, like I said, you know, you I went to I went to the little orientation um, just to kind of just fill everything out. My boy made me go. He goes, yo, just go fill it out. He said, you may have a different feeling. This was like the first time. And so I'm like, okay, cool. I didn't make it the first time. Didn't make it the second time. So I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna give you guys a third time to disrespect me. So it was more yeah. or less uh, me feeling disrespected, more yeah. so than disappointed. Because at the end of the day, my stats, my stats spoke loudly. I didn't need nobody to really stand on the table and really push for me to. to it's like I didn't, I didn't. It's just like the presidential election. I didn't. I didn't need somebody to campaign for me to make it to the Hall of Fame. If you just look, up, work look is at done. my stats, yeah. and like I said, you just roll the tape. Right. That's all. You, right. That's all you. That's all you need to see. Well, let, right. let me let me let me ask you this. And so uh, for me, let, like hold, I said, hold on, T. So so Randy, again, so you guys both went in in 2018 to the Hall of Fame. At that point, it could have been more of the one of the most epic Hall of Fames ever because you two who are connected at the hip and had these lustrous careers. Did that disappoint you at all when T.O. said he's not going to come? Well, well, I just remember I just remember all of the stuff that was talked about me and T.O. not liking each other as a player. And I, you know, I played 14 years in the National Football League and for 14 years, man, I love everything about T.O. Mm-hmm. You know, I wanted to compete against T.O. Never nothing bitter, no hatred, none, none of that. Right. So when when he didn't show mm-hmm. to the hall and then you hear that my man didn't go first ballot and he didn't go in his second year. And now he goes in his third year. Well, Randy, this is your first ballot. T.O.'s not showing up. And I'm sitting there like, wow, does it have anything to do with me? And, and, and that's mm-hmm. what I always wonder. And I appreciate mm-hmm. that story, bro. And, and the reason why I appreciate awesome. it. One, one, first, it was an awesome story. Number two, from an emotional standpoint, I can see why, because you handled, you handled it better than I actually would have handled it. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I, I no, said, yeah, I said that too. I told you know T what I'm that. Saying? <laughs> you handled it better than, and I'm going to tell you why, T.O. The, the work 
and the sacrifice, mm. all the negative things that we have to weigh on our shoulders, that we mm. have to chew it up, swallow it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And nobody knows what we go through. Mm. And just by hearing your story of what you went through and what your family went through, you know, that's why I say, dude, I have to commend you because I know till I started playing football from six years old and I love the game of football. Right. And for you to get all the way to the end where you're supposed to be rewarded and not mm. be rewarded all because of, of, of egos or, 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 somebody's own personal agenda opinion. bias. Yep. Yeah. And <laughs> I, I, I got to commend you, bro. And I appreciate that story because when you didn't show up, when it was me, when it was Ray, when it was, uh, you know, like oh, it. When it was the, when it was the old school guy, um, you know, Erlacher for, 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 for you not to be there for us to compete against each other for all them years and for you not to show up, bro, I, I felt a certain type of way. What nothing, nothing, no anger, nothing bitter, but from like, like I, I felt down. I really, mm, right. I, I really I felt down because mm. I, I didn't know how you felt just by hearing your story, T.O., but I just thought it had something to do with me. And I always felt that, I always, I always wanted to compete against you. I always talked positive when it came to me and you and the numbers and, and the statistics and the comparison and stuff. You know, everything was just all genuine love and just wanted to be a competitor. And mm -hmm. now that the curtain is about to close on our careers, I just, I, I just felt a certain type of way, you know, not, not thinking about, you know, what I went through, just more on mm -hmm. – me and you standing side by side of what they right. say we couldn't do or what they say we didn't like each other. Just all mm -hmm. the things that the naysayer said about us. Like I said, dude, I'm glad you cleared the air, man, because I always wondered about that. And I, like I said, man, and I'll say it again, you handled it well. I, I, I got to commend you because you handle it in a professional manner where a lot of people thought you were being standoff, thought you were being selfish. Hey, man, who knows the one to be honored by the, by the Pro Football Hall of Fame? Right. So, like like I say, bro, a, a lot of, uh, of men in your position that put that work in day in and day out would not have handled it that way, T.O., and I, and, and I, and I got to commend you for that, bro. I got to commend you for that. And, and, let, and, <laughs> I'm, gonna, and I'm gonna set the stage for, for both of you because this is where it all started, in my eyes, as you guys competing with each other, right? So it's the, the Langston University Scholarship Celebrity <laughs> Basketball Game in Oklahoma City in 1998. <clears throat> so I'm doing um, a, a scholarship raise you know a raise for my scholarship fund for langston so both y'all come down right so it's a celebrity basketball game langston Every high school or langston, langston university okay, you man. already know <laughs> <laughs> so everybody's doing their first they think in the first half like everybody's playing right so of course everybody know i put y'all on opposite teams on purpose just so you know okay okay y'all was kind of just going through the motions in the first half right but once the fourth quarter hit Y'all did not pass the ball to anybody else, and y'all <laughs> went. Lying, one, hash, no listen, y'all went one on one. No, y'all went one on one every single time down the floor to end that game in the fourth quarter, <laughs> and, and that's when I saw some. Again, it wasn't about talent. It wasn't about you know. It was just about the competitive spirit that right. the, the gym was the same three hours ago. But some way, somehow, when it got to the last part of that game, right, that competitive spirit came out, and you're just like, I'm going to one-up you. And you're like, no, you ain't. I'm going to one-up you. And y'all did not pass the ball to nobody else. <laughs> we had NFL players. We had celebrities. We had people everywhere. But y'all went one-on-one. -on -one, and at that time, I was like, this is going to be the start of something. Again, I don't know if we have that on video anywhere. But the night. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. that I mean, was that a was classic just... moment. Yeah, I think that was just being being competitive. Um, but I wanted to just kind of just go back and touch back on um, the whole the Hall of Fame thing, too. And and I think um, maybe I think Randy figured that, that it had something to do with him based on, I guess, maybe some of my comments or what have you. Because when you start to evaluate and assess, you know, as they started to when when when, when Randy was uh, nominated, 
Obviously, like I said, you know, they had, you know, there were so many media outlets, you know, leading up to that day um, about, again, they're basically just given uh, pretty much a whole rap sheet um, or campaign as to why both of us probably, you know, should have been into the Hall of Fame. And right. so I, I thought it was, I thought it was very contradicting um, with some of the analysts that basically used some of my antics and things that, that I did to prevent me from going into the Hall of Fame the first go around. Um, one of the things were that I played on five teams. And I'm like, okay, well, if you look at Randy's statistics and you look at his, you know, one year, Randy played on three teams and one season. So I'm like, okay. So I'm like, well, why is it a big deal that I played on five teams throughout my entire career? And I said, Randy played on three teams in one season, but you're using that against me to right. not get into, as you know, as 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 a uh, as not a reason to to be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, they talk about the antics, so you start talking about the antics, things of that nature. They start showing the ho- all the highlights. So I'm like, okay, they start showing some of Randy's highlights. They start showing my highlights. I'm like, okay, they're showing Randy. He's in Green Bay. He's doing the moon. Like, okay, he's mooning. He's mooning the crowd or what have you. So these are some of the things that, again, in comparison, based on me not getting to the Hall of Fame. He did some of the equal, if not some of the same things that I did, but he got in. So after that point, I'm like, okay, it's not, it wasn't about me against Randy. It was, a, it was more so about what the media had against me versus what they had against Randy. And then again, you started, I started to hear people that are in the hall of fame or people that were, um, that are hall of famers that are commentating. And they're like, Oh, well, Randy's, you know, getting in or getting a nod because he's now working with the media. I'm like, okay, well, cool. If that's the case, then, Oh, well, I'm like now, I mean, for me, people know that I'm not, I'm not a no kiss ass type of person. So if they feel like, okay, I got to be in the media for me to make it to the hall of fame, then I ain't never really got to get in. But at the end of the day, I talked to my family, even like I said, I remember I called, I talked to Randy mm-hmm. <clears throat> and told him about what I was, you know, what I was going to do. I think, do you right. remember that call? Yeah, and I yeah, told him, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I told him, I was like, yo, I said, this is what I got going on or what have you. I just wanted to let you know, okay, just so you can be prepared or whatever, because I'm sure they were going to ask him questions, this, not the other. And they did. So, Right. So I already knew what was going into it. So I just wanted to get that, you know, to him like, yo, it has nothing to do with him. It was based on how the media viewed me and and um, and how they were viewing him. And obviously the criteria to get into the Super Bowl, I guess we got viewed. You know, it was, it was drastically different versus how they saw me and how they saw Randy. So for whatever reason, you know, one side, I like I said, I didn't make it the first year or the second year. Then I'm like, OK, this this has to be personal. This, this has nothing to do with statistics because based on, like you just not ram, ram, rambled off our stats in the beginning, our stats were eerily similar. Mm-hmm. So Randy had me in some categories. I had Randy in some categories. So why, why, why is there a reason why I'm not, I wasn't going, I, I wasn't in in 2016 and now I got to wait to 2018 to get in. Right. So at the end of the day, bro, like I said, you know, I hope I cleared it up for you. And for all the listeners out there that is listening to get your popcorn ready with T.O. and Hatch, we have Randy Moss and he's asked me this question, like I said, um, to clear the air. No, it never had anything to do with you. It's basically on really how the media basically evalu- evaluated uh, the entirety of your career versus how they evaluated the entirety of my career. And again, like I said, some of the dialogue that they were using as as to why I sh- why I didn't get into the Hall of Fame uh, the first go around. Let, it let, was let, very contradictory based on you getting in your me, first. Let first me ask round. you this, T. Do you remember all like the first probably seven to eight years of Randy's career and all the stuff he was going through? Because it seems like you went through that later in your career and later in Randy's career. He was this, you know, the media darling, if you will, even though Randy didn't even speak to the media. You know (laughs) what I'm saying? He didn't say nothing to him. But the first six to seven years, I mean, everything Randy did, it was bad. He was the worst and he's the kick him out the NFL. Right. right, But at that time. Your career, you were just playing. You were quiet. You weren't, you know, you didn't have any bad media because you were the quiet type. And then you guys, again, your your careers kind of switched. The more you started celebrating, all of a sudden that's a bad thing in people's eyes, right. which is the dumbest thing ever. And and Randy just kind of kept playing, 
And again, I guess the perception of the media from you guys really switched in the middle of both you guys' careers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it had, I mean, the media, that's how the media is. And obviously Randy works in the media, um, but that's how they try to really, again, like I said, they tried to create dialogue that, to make people think that we had something against each other. Like I said, I mean, there were a number of years, like I said, there were so many years that went, went by that we played. I saw Randy. I didn't really know him. We didn't know each other personally. Right. Um, so I don't know how they could, you know, factor that we didn't get along or we hated each other. Or we had some dislike with each other when we never really had even met each other. Correct. So, yeah. So, I mean, that's have, you guys, have you guys ever watched each other's highlights? Have you have you ever seen like uh, some like a hundred? Have you seen a hundred of To touchdowns, or have you seen a hundred of Moss's touchdowns? No, a hundred, no, a hundred, you know, no. You know what I what I wanted to do? I when all this pandemic hit, mm-hmm. and I had a great idea. I think I ran it by Hatch. You know that you know. I'm sure you're familiar. They would they have this versus this battle with these artists. Yes. Man, yes. just hey, however yes. we get it, we can do it. However, we, you get your chance. <laughs> You get your 10 and I get my 10 and we go talk to you. And I and I and I tell you what, as a no, as a I fan, mean, you guys has touched that. Yeah, you have to do it. You gotta tried, do it. Trust me, I reached out to Swiss Beats. I reached, I reached out, I tried to reach out to the guys that basically were doing the whole verses with the music. So I'm like, yo, and this, this was right when the pandemic hit when nobody was doing anything. You know, everybody was you you turned on your 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 uh your your social media. Everybody was on live, you, across the top, everybody going live. And then this versus thing hit. And I'm like, man, this would be dope if we had like, okay, me and like receiver versus receiver or running yeah. back versus running yeah. back. Like they're doing all these artists, like they did Monica and Brandy, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, and then they, they're about to do Jeezy and, and Gucci and yeah. all these people. Man, I was like, yo, we should do a sports version of that. Yes. That would be you know, nice. Like everybody, yeah, to see, okay, and then, like I said, let's see, put our highlights up there, and then we could basically just chime in yeah. via, you know, via, via virtual it's, right here. It's a Zoom. couple, it's a couple, it's a couple in sports. In sports now, that mm-hmm. I would love to see a, a, a versus battle. I think, I think for the fact that the numbers and the entertainment that we was able to give the, the football fans – I think a Terrell Owens, Randy Moss, ten yeah. play versus or however you would would it call to be it, more than it ten would play, be yeah. great for the game of football. But I'm gonna tell you what, man, between like LeBron and Kobe, LeBron and right. Jordan, I'm talking <laughs> yeah. about plays. I don't. I'm not talking about statistics, bro. I'm right, not, right. Uh, play. Physical you play. Yards. You had two hundred yards a game. I, I'm not talking about that. Right. I'm talking about a play versus play. a play. Yes. Play. Oh, yeah. That's together. Dude, that would shut the internet down. Because I'm bro, telling that, you, I'm, bro, trust, <laughs> I'm here bro trust me. I had reached that, bro. I tried to reach out to Swiss. I DM'd him. I at one point I had his number. Wait, we ain't gonna that let that dog change. Lie. I was trying to figure out how can we do how can we do a sports version of what they were doing with the music, with the artists. And I'm like, bro, this, bro, like you said, at that point in time, like right when the pandemic hit, I'm like, bro, this shit, everybody would have yeah. been tuned in because you no, know, nobody was doing anything because everybody was on lockdown. We, we, we might so make like, that a bro, Christmas special. We might make that a Christmas right. well, special. Well, <laughs> let me say this. Let me, let, me, let me say this. They can't do it without a T.O. and Randy Moss uh, versus 10 versus 10 plays. So from all the networks out there, NFL Films, mm-hmm. ESPN, y'all employ me, NFL Network, all y'all football, professional football outlets out there that would love to see something like this. Now, listen now, as far as your production and getting this thing, don't leave me and T.O. out of it. Right. <laughs> we need to be in the Already. middle of it because we thought of this. But just think about 10 plays of, and I and, and uh, like y'all I y'all was, got way more than ten plays, dog. No, Trust me. Right, that's the thing, bro. You had you, you got had so many. Bro, you you had right. I had one hundred fifty three. So gotta, there's no way we got to keep the only reason why we we would have to keep it at ten is because there's going to be other other competition positions that come out. 
You know what I'm saying? Like other, yeah. other play, like other wide receivers come out, right. like Diggs and Hopkins, or, right, or, right. or Hopkins and 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 my man Michael Thomas in in the Saints. Right, Whatever. right, right. So you got to be able to keep it at ten plays for the future, because I don't. If we would do something like this, nah, it's, it's got to be. Hey, it's it's, it's got to be at least like twenty, because some right. of the plays you guys made, people have. Uh. And it's the best plays, but because people, if right. it's a forty yard bomb, Moss, you know, like it's a forty yard bomb. I could do that, right? But <laughs> right. the touchdown in the back of the end zone versus Dallas in the rain, where your body was going out of bounds, you still tapped two, and it was double cut. Like those are the plays that people gotta see, man. Right, and dude, there are so many touchdowns that I did that nobody's nobody's really seen. Like I said, I have 153, uh, 153. He has 156. So you got to think I, and about I, I got I got six. I got six. Yeah. <laughs> there's, bro, there's, uh, we'll just use you, we just use you as a teaser. There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> but, but, but again, there, bro, there are so, there are so many, so many uh, touchdowns, so, so many, many plays, plays that they haven't seen. Like I said, for me, touchdown. Bro, that's what I'm saying. It's just like me. Like I said, I remember a few plays just seeing some of the highlights that people and fans have been sending me. They're like Dallas, you know, cutting, doing a little looky, going in between the, the two linebackers, having them yeah, both hit. Both of them hit sideline. you and they fall down. Yes. Right. So, I mean, yeah. me doing drive routes, all types of stuff. Or not going one, one yard, or One yard hitch routes and y'all take it 60. Like both right. These are, identical. Man, just think about the hundred and something touchdowns oh. that these fans – haven't seen and right. then, like I said you know then again you put a poll because everybody I mean I get it all the time you know who's the best who's your best receiver well, we're well, we, we gonna, we gonna get that in we're gonna get that right in. because with me and me and Hatch I had to hang up on Hatch on this probably like about a month or so ago <laughs> he had, he had cried baby because he knew I was right Mossy he, he knew I was I right. tried to tell him I said Randy's good I said but I'm more of a complete receiver than Randy I said I did everything in the book I said Randy is good for taking the top off that's what people know him for I said yo he's had a couple of slants and things of that nature that he a couple to the house. a couple yeah but he ain't really he had in my opinion. There is not okay. most of his most of his touchdowns, they they bombs. Okay, okay. Bombs. We go. So let, now we're getting into it. So this is what we <laughs> go do. I'm gonna start you before we get into that conversation. I'm gonna give you the criteria on who's the better receiver between To and Moss because there's got to be some type of criteria, right? It's right. not about speed and size combination because we know you guys have that, and there's other players in the NFL that had that, right? So the first thing I'm gonna first criteria is do you show up in big games obviously right that's it's got to be one right big second game. criteria is big catches or your big highlights or your big plays right third is uh how many times do you guys get double covered right and then 3b would be did you guys still perform versus the double coverage right oh. five would be hall of fame corners what did you guys do versus other hall of fame corners that you went up against when it was one-on-one -on -one, right six is of course your hands yeah. or your playmaking ability versus defenders this ain't count when you guys are wide open right you guys rarely wide open anyway but again when the defender or two defenders are on you do you still make the play seven is your run after catch or your like play making ability when your ball is in your hands number eight catches over or between two or three people Number nine, play in numerous systems with numerous quarterbacks and still put up numbers. That's and me you, all day. And number 10, <laughs> where the defensive coordinator put you as the number one priority to stop you that week. Were you the that's, number one that's, priority? That's been everywhere. That's been everywhere in my career. If you so, think about I, I made, I made, and I didn't, bro, I didn't, this is, this is how. I wasn't so in tune with statistics and things of that nature. Bro, I didn't even know what all pro, five time all pro. I didn't really know all of that stuff until obviously you get nominated for the Hall of Fame and then they start rambling off your stats. And they go, oh, he was five time all pro. Bro, bro, all pro's a big like, deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't I didn't really know any of that stuff. So I was like, at one point in time, I was like, okay, I just want to make the, I just want to make the Pro Bowl. I felt like, okay, if I got a nod to the Pro Bowl, then okay, I'm making some noise. But when you think about uh, doing it everywhere that you know, being productive everywhere they played. 
I know that I did that because I outplayed and I was the number one receiver, even when I didn't, even when teams basically, especially at the end of my career, when they, they didn't even think that I would be the number one receiver, I outplayed my last two years, I outplayed two guys that was with their quarterbacks for the entirety of, pretty much the entirety of their right. career. In Buffalo, I, Lee Evans was there. I then, outplayed right. him of course. the second half of the season. That was when Ryan Fitzpatrick got in their quarterback position. Bro, I was like, a, I had like 800 and I think 30 something or whatever yards, but I didn't get a bulk of those yards until Trent Edwards got hurt and then Ryan Fitzpatrick came in. So then I started to ball out. I outplayed Lee Evans, like I said, the second second half of the season because I had a quarterback that knew who to get the ball to. And then mm-hmm. you fast forward a year after that, I go to Cincinnati. Chad has been with Carson Palmer for at this point like nine, ten years. I go in there a month in training camp. They didn't even sign me initially in March. They had Antonio Bryant. They brought him. He was ten years younger than uh, ten years younger than I was. So that's what they went with. I was 37. He was 27 at the time. And that was like, I went and met with Marvin Harrison. I mean, uh, Marvin Lewis, the head coach or whatever. We went in for the dinner or what have you. And then on my way back to the airport, uh, the guy told me, he goes, man, they signed Antonio Bryant. I was like, what? So I was like, all right, cool. So I, I, I'm, I'm still a free agent. Months ago, I, they go into mini camp, OTAs. Then I find out he has an injury. They bring me into training camp. I go into training camp for a month, learning to play. That was a number system, different system than I've ever really played in. But I was like, okay, cool. I'm just going to make it work. I had to learn. Obviously, you know, Carson Palmer brought me in. He saw me work out over the summer uh, in L.A., told the guys that I, you know, that I look good. They brought me in. And then, again, the rest is history. So you think about, like I said, being able to really flourish in every system. Um, like I said, I was in control, and Randy can attest to this, you don't, you don't really matter about who's the quarterback or whatever. If you got confidence in your ability and you know what you can do, if you got a, a, a head coach, an offensive coordinator that puts you in the right position and you're in the right system, it's just like I said, we were alluding to earlier, you know, having just say both of us on the team. If you have the right offensive mind that can put both of us in a position to, to succeed, then you're going to be productive because you're so confident in your ability. All we need is the ball. Yeah. You just need the quarterback yeah. to get the ball to us and we're going to do what we do. So that's what I did. I didn't really worry about, honestly, like the quarterback situation. The only time that I started to worry about that is when I was in, when I was in Buffalo. Cause I'm like, I never really played with a young quarterback like Trent Edwards and a prior to coming in or them signing me to that one year deal. They said, yo, we want you to come in and kind of help groom this young quarterback alone. And at that point in my career, I'm like, yo, this is the first time I'm ever hearing this. I'm like, yo, this is like, one of those conversations, I was like, okay, you're kind of on your way out. They want you to just come in and groom a guy. I'm like, I never really heard that type of thing before. So I'm like, all right, cool. I ain't really tripping. I'm just going to ball out and do what I do. And so that's it, man. I, I mean, everywhere that I went, I basically adjusted my game to not only the the, the systems. Most of the systems I played in was sort of West Coast based. Um, but I just like said, and you, I just you still there. you still put Jerry Rice as your number one receiver. Yeah, I mean, I think statistically, yeah. I mean, now, think stati- about- I didn't ask you statistically. Yeah, I, said, I mean, yeah. Jerry based Rice on- is the best receiver to ever play in the NFL, in your I- a personal opinion. Yeah, yeah, I think. So, okay, on- yeah, based- Randy, yeah. who's the best receiver to ever play in the NFL? You talking to him. Already. Okay. So. I'll put, I'll put myself first. I'll put T.O. second. Mm-hmm. And I would put, I think Jerry. Jerry's probably third or fourth. I'm talking about dominating the game and changing the game of football. I don't live on statistics because if you live on statistics and live on championships, that's all political. Mm-hmm. You, you've seen guys mm-hmm. cut, but just, you've seen guys released or cut from a team just by a couple words in the media. You've seen guys giving contracts uh, or you've seen guys not giving con- contract just because the color of their skin. So I think that you got to, you got to throw politics out of the game of football mm-hmm. and look at the, look at the impact of what, each individual was able to make in the game of football. You know, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't, you know, discredit anything that a guy like Marvin, Jerry, Terrell has done for the game. But when I look at the game of football and my impact of, <clears throat> you know, being able to come in as a rookie, leave coming in hot, leaving hot with all the double, with all the triple coverage coming in, I really don't like talking about 
being the best wide receiver of the game because I never set my goals into, into being the best. But I think that at the end of the day, you know, to look at a lot of a lot of accomplishments from the guys that they think that are at, at the top. I mean, rightfully so, T.O. could be one, Jerry could be one, anybody else could be one. But I think that when I look at myself, and I'm not looking at it in the highlights, just talking about the game of football, of uh, uh, being able to come in as a rookie, uh, set a record for being the highest scoring offense in the National Football League, and then being able to go back 10 years later and do it do again. It again. Mm-hmm. So just a lot of – of, of the impact of the game of football that I look at. I, I'm, I'm really not a big statistics guy, really not. And I really don't like the argument about who was the best. I mean, jokingly, of course, I'm going to say myself, but I really don't like, I really don't like the argument of who's the best in the game because respectfully, uh, I, I, I give myself the nod because you, if you're not going to bet and believe in yourself, then really, who are you? Mm-hmm. But I look at the impact that guys like Terrell has made in the game, man. And that's why I feel that, you know, when dealing when dealing with changing the game of football, when you see that they're putting two guys over me, they're putting two guys and three over Terrell itself. So, like I say, I look at I look at the game and it kind of it, it, it kind of makes me feel a certain way when we boil down the discussion of who's the greatest of all time. Mm-hmm. I, I really don't like talking about it because I'm, I'm 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 really I really feel a certain type of way because I really don't base it upon numbers. It's not you the know? numbers. No, it's yeah. not. It's, it's really not the numbers. And I just look at the impact of the game, man, because, uh, you know, I had two years in Oakland. One year I fell off and that's where all the talk about I lost the step. I lost the speed. So and then the year, T.O., that you're talking about that I was on three teams in one year. So realistically, I had a 14-year career, but if you subtract those two years, I really had a 12-year career putting up those type of numbers. So mm-hmm. I don't really like to talk statistics when talking about, you know, greatness or who's the greatest of all times. I just look like I just look at impact of players. I don't care if it's the guard, offensive line, or wide receivers, man. I mean, I give credit when credit is due, but that's not a comfortable, uh, not a comfortable you know, question or topic that I like to yeah. discuss really don't. The, re- yeah, the reason I just, I can't put Jerry in front of you two is because if I go down that list of criteria, Jerry doesn't meet, a, I, I haven't seen Jerry jump up over two and three people catch the ball consistently. <laughs> you, you know, I haven't seen him get <laughs> double covered as much as you two got double. I just didn't see that out of Jerry, you know, what I'm that, not, not taking nothing away from him, no, obviously, I but I didn't see that as much when I'm watching Jerry. Right. And, now. and, and I, I, and, and to, to, to uh, Jerry's credit uh, and not really to his defense, but I'm like, you think about, look at the quarterbacks that he played with. That, and, yeah. the system, and at that time, the system that he played, he played in, and the years competition, above, like I yes. said, again, Randy and I, when you start factoring into uh, that generation of big, big receivers, you know, big, fast, strong, whatever, mm-hmm. we're kind of the trendsetters. We started that kind of uh, that that trend of big receivers. When you think about Jerry and the quarterbacks that he played with, he never had a drop off in, in in quarterbacks. He went from System. one Hall of Fame quarterback to, to another. another. And right. imagine, so, imagine if you if you went from Tom Brady to Brett Favre you, right. you, for, so, for 10 years. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, exactly. So when you talk about Jerry not having to, like you said, jump over guys or whatever, I think defenses weren't as complicated, not complex as they are now. When you talk about, you know, all the exotic defenses that we had to, to, to face and then, you know, double team and triple team and things of that nature. At that time, the game, the defense, the defensive coordinators, they really hadn't ex- really expanded their their knowledge and and exoticness of, of defenses at the time. So they were carving up guys left and right. So if you think yeah. about Jerry's career, you look at his highlights, bro. He was killing guys. He was running post. He was running slants. All he was it. running Colorados. What, what I mean, rookie year? What I mean, what year was it for you, To, for you to see double coverage? I mean, for for to have double and triple coverage, what year was it for you? 
Uh, probably I think around maybe my my fourth my fifth year fourth or fifth year. Um, that was when obviously when Jerry started to kind of like you know they started trying to you know at that point in time you know kind of phasing him out a little bit and there right, were rumors right. about him being traded and things of that nature. And once they traded him away, man, I was like, man, this is crazy. I'm like, yo, I got some big shoes to fill. So for me, going into those off seasons, man, I'm like, yo. Obviously, they see something in me that they let, in my mind at that time, the greatest receiver of all time, they let, they released him. Right. So I'm like, yo, I got some big ass shoes to fill. So yeah. that was what, is, so that was, that, that was what inspired me in the offseason and why I took things so personal. When we were talking about the game earlier, that why I went off on the sideline, that was because all the work that I had put in during the offseason to be the guy. Jerry's right. gone. So now right. I'm that guy and you're not treating me like that guy and you're not having, you're not holding this guy accountable, year. you know, for, for his play. And I'm like, yo, I'm running here wide open. You know, he's throwing the ball behind me. Like, yo, everybody has a job, bro. You're a professional. At this point in time, like, I know so you're, you're, four, you're fourth and fifth. Yeah. Your fourth or fifth year is when you started mm-hmm. feeling it. Yeah. So that was kind of around the time where I felt like, okay, cool. But my, the first time that I, I, I really was like, Went to line up and I was like, "Yo, this is crazy." <laughs> I was I was in Dallas, and I uh, Michael Irvin was on the sideline, and I go out for I, like I said I, I I'm getting ready I'm on the right side of the formation wide, and I had a DB and a linebacker come line up in front of me, and I so that, well, I, that was your that was your ninth or tenth year in Dallas. Yeah, that was yeah that was uh, that was year ten. So, I mean, I knew, like I said, I was very aware, especially in, in Philly, bro, they were double teaming me. They were doing everything because like I said, in Philly, I was, man, I was scoring touchdown left and right. I was just, I just happened to be deep beating double team coverages. Um, like I said, schematically, Andy Reid put me in positions to win, like based on, you know, the tendencies and things that they put me in motion. Like I, bro, Andy yeah. Reid is by far the most offensive guru minded type of coach that I've ever been around and toward the end of my career in San Francisco they started to move me around so much because like yeah I was I was getting double teamed they were playing cover two and things of that nature and then there were games where I was being stagnant and they were like yo we can't just leave him lined up to just double team him. so now we start doing motion put me on the, on the line screen off I'm going mm-hmm. outside in mm-hmm. inside out bro I scored on X, X logo Z scene I scored on that play three weeks in a row. All they did was move me around. It was yeah. the same play, but I just moved. They just put me in different position. I scored three weeks in a, three weeks in a row on that one on that same play. So right. that's where again I started to evolve and I started to see, you know, yeah, if I move it around and I, they start to realize, okay, they, the ability that I had. Like I said, a lot of it is is really put on the shoulders of the offensive coordinator to assess right, 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 the right. talent that's out there. I'm like, okay, let's put these guys in positions to win. So back to my story, when I was in Dallas and I go out, I don't know who we were playing, and I go out and I go line up, and I thought the dude was – I thought he had a busted coverage. I thought he just didn't know what he was doing. Man, Michael <laughs> Irvin – I heard Michael Irvin on the sideline. He goes, yo, what? He said, what is this? He goes, I've never seen this in my entire life. Bro, mm-hmm. I had a DB and a linebacker, linebacker with a sa- with a safety over the top, and with a safety over top, bro. So Ma- like, Moss, when Moss, when did you start seeing that defense? Ninety nine, my second year. Yep, I rem- I remember it because because that's, that's what we because we were just like they because this is what this is how they measured. I guess this is what Chris Carter would say in the meeting, right? They go put the backer on you and still have a Pro Bowl corner on you and still have a safety over the top. That was the difference between what Chris Carter seen in his career as being a number one and what you were seeing as a number one. And I was like, yeah, but that's- let me let me let me two things. Let me let me say this first. First off, I don't I don't want the fans and the people watching you all's podcast to get it messed up that, you know, that we dislike or, or discredit anything Jerry Rice was able to do or no, ever accomplish. I think that when you look at when you look at the top of the pedestal and you see that Jerry Rice's name is at the top. And then when you look at the numbers that he has, and then you start doing your calculating and saying like, dag, I got to play this many years to obtain this or this, that man, the heck with all that, man, I just want to play football and just be, just be, 
just be an impactful type of ball player. So right. I don't want people to to really think, you know, myself and T.O. is, is slandering or just bashing anything that Jerry did because right. Jerry was the, the, the stepping, he was the pedal, so he was at the top of it. And I think that if you come in to look at any records that T.O. or myself or Jerry may have right now, if that is a individual, a wide receiver's individual goal to be able to say, hey, man, I want the most receptions or I want the most touchdowns in a season or I want this, then that means that if you reach that goal, then that's something to, to, to really be proud about. So Absolutely. for us to be able to set our goals to, to, the, to dethrone Jerry or whoever's at the top, I mean, that means that you're betting on yourself and, and, and that's where greatness appears. That's where greatness shows. You know, T.O. doesn't have to wait to his third year to be a first house, a first battle Hall of Famer. When you look at the tape and when you look at, you know, the the, the impact and, and what an individual does, then it's kind of like there's a few players that I'll take to my grave, grave with me. T.O., you're one of them because we played in the same era. Right. And, you know, <laughs> and when I look at, you know, when I look at how teams play, played us, I always used to look at how teams played me, how they played you, how they played Marvin. And that's where I used to get some of my, okay, this how Terrell beat it, this how mm-hmm. Marvin. Beat it. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the ways, because I wasn't strong like you, T.O., you wasn't fast as me. Marvin didn't right. have the things that we had, but we didn't have right. the things that Marvin had. Right. So mm-hmm. a lot of the film watching that we watched each week, or I watched each week, was to see how I could get an edge of what T.O. did last week, what Marvin did last week. Like, when Peyton Manning and, and, and the Indianapolis coach introduced that stretch play action play with Marvin Harrison on that mm. post, mm. I said to myself, why in the devilish, why do I like that play? <laughs> he plays you different. Yeah. So a lot of the learning, uh, the learning that we had to learn defenses and learn – how good we were as a player to understand, well, if the safety's coming down to Marvin's side, why can't you run the stretch play, a eh, Randy? One, mm. you don't have a back like Edger and James. And mm, number two, right. the safety is not going to play you like that, right. knowing that he doesn't have to honor the run like that. So, like I say, as we played and learned the game, a learning what, why T.O., flourished in this offensive scheme and not this one and why I flourished in this one and not that one that's where the student of the game comes in that and that's why I say I studied everybody even though you had a down year or this person had a down year week to week if you're on the tape I'm studying you so Mm -hmm. that's how I think that I became you know a, a, a hall of famer first ballot however you see it because I never did I never did have a off button when it came to learning i never Mm -hmm. had an off button and you know knowing that if they throw me a slant two guys are not going to collide and and bounce off me i know better Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying (laughs) (laughs) so basically i got an apo i i I, I know when i know when i know when the battle's over already (laughs) you know there's certain things that i might try hey man it might not look good so I always took it upon myself to make sure I was always on top of my game, no matter if it, no matter if it was against UTO or if it was against Marvin, no matter who it was. I always wanted to be on top of my game, man. And now that we can sit back and reflect and look at highlights and maybe put this team play versus uh, uh, play together, I think for me, you know, for – people to understand a little about me a little bit about me growing up and I never visited the pro football hall of fame and I was only like two or three hours from it and when I had an opportunity to know that I'm going to be in the hall of fame you know how you go on field trips as a kid with your school and you go to the museum or you go to somewhere where there's history and you look and you see the name and there's a name in your classroom, last name, Washington or Smith mm-hmm. or something. You'd be like, they could be Ken. I don't know. Right. And <laughs> I always used to look at things like that and wonder if I had anybody from my family's history 
mm. to ever accomplish anything. Mm. And if so who are they and what they what did they accomplish? And so for me to be able to have that statue at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, that was never for me. And mm-hmm. I wanted to, you know, commend and thank my coaches and teammates for helping me get there. But that was never for me. What I really want my name and statue in the Pro Football <laughs> Hall of Fame for is because they say it lasts forever. You know, T.O., we have kids. Both of you have kids. And, you know, we're going to be grandparents one day. We're going to be great grandparents one day. And I and I just want my kids and, you know, whatever they are to me, you know, great, great nieces or whatnot to be able to look and say, man, that's my great uncle or that's my great mm-hmm. grandfather or something like that. And that's why, because I, 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 that's how I grew up not knowing, you know, if anybody by the last name Moss has ever accomplished anything. And if so, what was it? So I think this for me, being able to get, you know, to that level of, of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, man, was just, it said more about, you know, more about me being, being more family oriented and hopefully the future of Mosses and whoever to come can see what I've accomplished <laughs> instead of me right now in the present. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. So I know we're about to get up out of here, but I got to give you guys one more. Again, I got to give you guys some, a couple more questions. But We've been on, on it almost two hours, it's man. It's been two hours, my guy. Yeah, let's hey. go fast on Get Your Popcorn hey, Ready. Hey before, hey, before you go there, Hatch, I, okay. I, I want to talk I want to talk about one of the other things because th- this category was similar to this whole Hall of Fame nod, uh, the Hall of Fame uh, situation. We've had the discussion on this top 100. Again, mm. I felt disrespected again by Joe Horgan, who was part of the process in the top 100 athletes that I was, like I said, made an impact on the game. And the fact that they left me off again, <laughs> I, I was pissed, bro. I was pissed you, No, off. you not was, still are. Yeah. And so <laughs> for me, I saw, I, I think I saw the interview that you did or what have you. And so this is what I want to ask. And maybe not ask, but I just know me. I know me. This is what just say I made. Just say I made the top 100 and let's say Randy didn't make it. And they would have done it in and they, and they did an interview with me and talked about it or what have you. I would have I, me personally, I would have let the world know. I'm like, yo, I, I this is this is a tremendous honor. But I I feel some way about this because. How can I be one of the top two or three um, receivers in the league at at part of this top 100 and you leave Randy off? I would I me personally, I would have made that I would have made that known and I would have let those people know, because for me, I, again, felt disrespected. Not like I said, it goes back to the first time 2016. I didn't make the first ballot. Second, the, the second year, 2017, um, I, I did make it. And then obviously I made it in 2018. Um, and then obviously, okay, here's the top 100. And then obviously they're doing doing it by category, by position or what have you. And then I'm like, okay, how can I be one of the top three in all categories? Me, you, me, you, and Jerry. And I don't make one of the, the, the top 100. I, I'm wow. not... I, I'm not but you, but you nothing. know, but you know, it has nothing to do with your stats. Unfortunately, it has. It's that. Do, it's those same characters who, right? You know what I'm so, saying? Yeah. But it, that, that, that again, that alone, that, that pissed me off. Like I said, that's why, bro. I just can't. I don't. I can't get down like that. I just. I don't see the league the same. I don't see people in positions uh, like David Baker in the in the in the committee. Uh, of guys that basically uh, uh, assess and nominate guys to, to get into the Hall of Fame, I just don't see. I just don't see him the same anymore. Um, because at the end of the day, how can you have one of the top three um, guys? Me, myself. I mean, myself, Randy, and and, and Jerry um, at the top, and then I'm not. And then you, and you, who did who did they put in? I think was it Steve Lar- Steve Largent. Largent. Steve Largent was uh, in there. It was some other receiver. Steve that they Largent put is in there. Yeah. Top 100, and, and and I don't make it. So again, man, I I, I guess that I, I respect you know everything that you know we have done, and for everybody that's listening, I've never had any gripe with with Randy. We like I said, we never even met for for many many years, or even talked to each other uh, for that matter. So for this notion to think for everybody to think that you know we had some type of animosity toward each other. Like I said, I hope with this this podcast yeah. and everybody watching and listening 
that that is all, all in fun. Absolutely. Well, let me, gripe, let me, my gripe has been mostly with the people that have basically assessed really uh, my talent, evaluate my, my evaluated my talent. Um, you know, in 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 uh, totality and in entirety with everybody in the league, and so for again, I felt I felt slighted again, felt disrespected again. That how can I be you know top three and then not be right, on, right. In, the, in that top one hundred list? Like I said, I would I me personally, I would have let them know. I'm like, yo, this is a tremendous honor, but I would have felt a certain way that this guy isn't in the in the on this list when I, yeah, we're, right. we're neck and neck. Well, let me let me. I, all right, I'm a, I'm in mine, and 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 I got a quick question for you at the end of mine. Okay. If I could go back and change some things about earlier in my career of some of the bumps in the road that I didn't handle too well, meaning like the word professionalism, like for me to be able to come from Rand, West Virginia, where I wasn't exposed to a lot. And then kind of like overnight that being the number one receiver in the world and being the highest paid wide receiver or or football player at a time in the world. So all of this stuff came to me overnight. And and if I could go back and and I wouldn't change my career, Mm -hmm. but if there was some moments that I could change as far as how to handle certain things in my life of like not knowing how to handle the media per se, you know, where I'm being, you know, not disrespectful, but not knowing how to handle it. Uh, Just going with like the conversations that we're having, just conversate like there. And then when you get out my nerve, get on my nerves, get out my face. So it was just a lot of, a lot of things that I wish I could have handled different. Maybe, you know, things would have turned out different. But as far as my career, how I played it, the chip that I carried on my shoulder, I wouldn't change that. And the reason why I'm saying that, T.O., is because I really felt that I think a lot of the labels that people had or or have about us, perceptions per se, that it goes with maybe one sound bite that 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 might have went up, went uh, went off the wrong way or something like that. And I'm not talking from the media standpoint. I'm just talking mm-hmm. about where we come from standpoint. Mm-hmm. And if, if, like I say, I wasn't prepared for the big, the big, the big lights of going to the national football league where they're worth billions of dollars. I'm not, I wasn't used to that. I wasn't set up for that. I wasn't educated enough to, to, to go and be a first round pick for us to be pro bowlers, be the man on our team, make all mm-hmm. these dollars. That's why I say, if there's some things that I can change, I will go back and ch- change certain things, but not my style of play, mm-hmm. you know, and to UTO just for the things that has happened to you later in your career or later on in life of where you should be rewarded, you know, for your career. Is there anything that you say that you could have done wrong? Because I know when I check my ego in at the door, I'm the first to say I could have done some things different, you know, as far as my approach <laughs> to the game of football. Yeah. Uh, of, of handling things. And, I, and, I, and I'm the first man to say that I could approach it different. And the question I got for you, T.O., and this is my last one for the podcast, you know, with things, like I said, for things to happen later in your career, that where you feel, and I feel it too, that you should be rewarded for that stuff. Is there something, and, and you don't have to go into detail, but do you feel there's something that you think that you could have done different, not your, not the way you approach the game, but just th- just your life and handling, you know, from where we come from and just the, the, just being a professional? Uh, absolutely. I've, uh, I think I've addressed that to a number of uh... I guess media outlets and interviews that I've uh, that I've had over the course of my career, and these even post um, football, where people have asked me that same question, and I tell them, like, yeah, absolutely. I said I'm not perfect by any means. I said, yeah, I right. wish I could have I could have handled some things differently. Um, the you know they've asked me the R word. They're like, yo, do you regret anything? And I'm like, no, I don't regret anything that I did because you know all the things that I've been criticized and vilified for. Um, in my eyes, they, they, they weren't that bad. Um, I got criticized for, for celebrating test for my t- touchdown celebrations. Um, you talk about sound bites and things of that nature. 
That's just part of football. That's what right. some. That's what the media uses to promote. You know, some of the Their games. Stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right, right. So uh, at the end of the day, um, again, I don't regret anything that I did because uh, I felt like you know, growing up, like I said, you grew up how you did. I grew up how I did, and you know, raised by my grandmother, she taught me right from wrong, and I think I conducted myself. Uh, throughout the course of my career based on how she raised me. And I think she did a fantastic job in doing that. So when you think about the the, the entirety of my career, I've never had any run-ins with the law and things of that nature. And those are some of the things when you talk about the Hall of Fame, they factored in some of those things, but um, I've never had any of those issues. When you talk about disagreements or arguments with coaches and, and players or teammates, who doesn't have those things? Some things right. are more publicized than others, and some aren't. Uh, just so happened, you know, us being who we are, me being outspoken, um, me, like I said, uh, I guess putting a spotlight on myself because I was doing the touchdown celebrations. Uh, the media at that time, they didn't really know how to really assess that. They didn't really know me as a person. Um, all the information that they had, it was hearsay. It was based on, you know, their production meetings and them asking, you know, certain coaches or certain players uh, about the personality and the character of who we were. Um, and that doesn't, like I said, if you don't really know us, then um, you can't really just go by what one or two people uh, may say or assess about you. And so that's where I felt like I was unfairly uh, portrayed um, in the media. But yeah, I've said that consistently that I wish I could have, like I said, handled some things differently. Right. Um, but overall, I don't regret anything about my career because if you look at it, um, what did I do that was actually wrong? Um, because yeah, you thought about, they, 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 they criticized me for the touchdown celebrations. Um, they criticized me for, you know, some of the sideline, you know, outbursts and things of that nature. When, you know, let's talk about your former teammate, Tom Brady. Tom Brady has berated his teammates on national TV, on sidelines, or I've seen other quarterbacks uh, get into it with their their head coaches or offensive coordinators, but with them, they're viewed differently. Um, and, and is it to say that because they're white and I'm black or whatever the case may be, but why does it, okay, why doesn't the same thing apply to him, um, you know, uh, your assessment of him berating his teammates or his coach or what have you, why is it so drastically different when you're when it comes to me? Because I did some of the same things and I was looked at as a poor teammate. Uh, I was being selfish, things of that nature. But Tom or some other white person course, can do of it. Of course, of and course. And they're, they're looked at as being leaders. Uh, they're showing passion. They just want to win. When right. I'm, I'm, I'm doing the same thing. You're being thing. vilified. My passion, right. right. My passion and my love for the game is the same. But obviously, well, may, I, I think mean, maybe when you were a rookie, it's like when you weren't using Carmax on your lips. I think that's why they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but so, uh, hey, but no. So, so let let me let me get into this before we got to get out of here. So again, yeah. this is for both you. Um, again, one word answers only, please, to see how similar or unsimilar you guys are not or are. I guess you could say. So, number one question, right? Who's a better basketball player? Me. Me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let, leave it there. Leave it there. Me? Right. What? Do, dominoes or spades? Dominoes. Okay. All right. Um, if you were, if you both had to race in six months, right, you're both older now, who would <laughs> win the race if you had six months to train? Me? Oh, <laughs> you want to go hey. answer? Most hey. yeah, go answer that one. Oh, no. Okay. That's Come on, it. man. <laughs> Hey, on, hey, on, we can, hey, we can line it up. If he wanted, if he wanted no, to make no, happen. one, one word answers only. One word, is, okay. <laughs> so a trip, a trip across the country, South Carolina, L.A., bus or plane? Plane, gotta be a plane. Plane, okay. Uh, Thanksgiving dinner can only you only can pick one. Clean up or cook it? Clean up. Clean up. Clean up. Okay. Um, favorite route. Playing when you are all playing one Ooh, route. Sluggo for me. Sluggo. Sluggo. I already know what Randy's going. I know what he is. Nine eighty nine. Nah, my. I, you said one word. I, I'm gonna give you post. We'll get to it later, but I'm gonna say uh, the post route. Post route. Okay. 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 There it is. Okay. Um, who's more country? Randy. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, he's so country. He been <laughs> hey, he been mispronouncing my name the whole entire show. <laughs> hey, hey, I, was, I, was, I told him a thousand times. You you have to have a but you have to have a certain dialect to say oh, your I name correctly. What is I, it? Say it correct. It's Terrell, but Terrell. He's so, what I've been, what I've been Terrell, because he's so. So he's country. country. It's his that, dialect is what oh, he's it, saying. I, I get it. Exa- oh, trust me. This is, oh, trust me. I'm already knowing. People are going to listen to the podcast and they're going to say, dude, why did you let him say your name wrong? And I'm just going to say, hey. I said, no, no, I apologize, I, man. I'm sorry. I'm uh, sorry. Hey, hey. It's My dialect. Is, this guy is a country bumpy. <laughs> there it is. He wins that one. He wins that one. Um, <gasps> Best NFL coach, Andy Reid for me. Mine is the greatest of all time, Belichick. Belichick, yep, yep. Okay. Yep. Best corner. That Not that you I, face the best corner ever, and that you got in you guys' opinion. Uh, man, that's a number of them. Um, Just one. Only pick one. Oh. Uh, I, I thought Darrell Revis was nice. That's the number one corner. Okay. I, I thought he was. I mean, I played against a number of other guys, but I think later on in my like toward the end of my career, um, and, and what he was doing, okay. a lot of people don't uh, understand that. You know, they try to say that he was on an island, but he, he wasn't had, on no he, island. He, had yeah, he wasn't on the top. But no, so yeah. you saying the number one cornerback we played against? Uh-huh. Yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. yeah let's leave it. At, let's leave it at that. Leave it at that. Leave it at that. I'm gonna tell you what. And I know he gonna watch this podcast because we had many battles. <laughs> hey, Darrell Revis, don't you stroke your ego too hard. You got two of the greatest wide receivers in the history of the game to show you some love. But I'm Darrell Revis, he was a tough one, Hatch. All right. Revis. And, and, Yo, only, he was and tough. the reason, and, I, and I'm sure some people are gonna listen and they're gonna watch it and be like, "Oh, you're trying to say Dion is you know wasn't a great." I never really got to play Dion in my in his, prime. I got him. Prime. I got Dion later in his career. I right, got, right. You know we did. So yeah. that's oh, why I agree, with you. I agree with you, T.O. I won't. I won't say prime because prime was at the end of his career. But while right. I, 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 I will agree with T.O. and say Darrell Revis. Mm-hmm. All right, right, is- right. Yeah, because you think about Dion, bro. Like that. That speaks for itself. Like, bro. He he's like like he is the standard for defensive backs. And then, like I said, I never really got a chance to really play him at the height of my career where he was. And so, you know, Andre Reed and Ryzen and all those guys, right, Jerry right. Wright, they got a chance to really see him on a, you know, every weekend. Quick, basis, quick question. So. Mm-hmm. Quick question for, now we just said Darrell <laughs> Reed has had a little safety help sometime. Mm-hmm. They say prime time never had a safety over never the Never had a safety. Right. T.O., right. T.O., would, would, would you have went to sleep at the same time Saturday night or would you have... <laughs> Would you have stayed up a little late? You got prime time the next day. Give it to me, raw, T.O. Oh no, no, no! I, I, oh, trust me, I would have played. The thing is, I would have had that. I would have been really attentive, attentive when going into a week, and I knew that I had to play prime time. Like whenever that week before, like whomever we played that Sunday, and then I knew that we had to play prime time. My after that game. My mind would have went immediately <laughs> on prime time. I was like, okay, we got a, we had, I, I got a different ball of wax coming up next week. So I would have been extra attentive, like in a meeting, <laughs> on practice field, watching okay. film, everything. No doubt. Only- I would have been one of those guys, like I would have been watching tendencies and things of that nature to kind of, okay, let me see what he does on this. Or as you said earlier, you would have watched how, Certain guys got releases on him on certain right. routes and things of that nature. So you okay. would have tried to incorporate that. And you're like, okay, how did he beat him on this? How did he beat him on that? So I would have, again, I would have gone to the coach and be like, yo, he's not really good on this route right here. I can see he turned his hip or he right, plays this right, way right, or whatever. Right, right. So let me do some of these routes. And then I'm like, okay, let me go in motion. He may not be that way. He may not be as, uh, as stout in motion as he is stationary. So those are some of the things, like I said, Going into a week like that, having somebody that, that I know that's all, that that's the real deal, my antennas would have went up immediately after that. As soon as that game ended, that, that <laughs> was fire. Oh, I was yeah. ready. I'm with you. <laughs> all right, let me let me get back to it. Uh, favorite city in America? Ooh, uh, favorite city. Ooh, I gotta go with uh, I gotta go with like Miami. Miami. 
Hatch, I don't even have one, bro. I'm so reserved. Something in the country. So, yeah, Charlotte, I, I North Carolina. <laughs> yeah, I don't have one. A uh, car or truck? Truck. Mm. Mm. Which one, T? Uh, Man, he uh, won't go. <laughs> I'm going to go truck. I'm going to go truck. truck. Okay. Michael and Jackson. He, Michael Jackson or Prince? Michael Jackson for me. I'm Michael Jackson moonwalking Jackson. all day. <laughs> okay. All, all right. One song before a pregame, right? As you warm up in your headphones, what is it? Um, I used uh one of mine was um uh, uh the P. Diddy song, Can't Hold Me Down. Can't hold me. Okay. Cause I couldn't at that one point I got <laughs> they couldn't one, hold no, me one, down. No, one 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 answer. One answer. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm going to tell you what, I don't care if it was the Phil Collins or the DMX version, but I need to hear that air tonight. Air, uh, both oh, versions, yeah. yeah. I need to hear the Phil, need Phil Collins <laughs> or the DMX. I need we played, that. actually, we had that plan. We They would play that in the locker room. But in my head, come out, yeah, yeah in my head, but in my headphones, though, in my headphones, if I'm warming up or whatever, yeah. Oh yeah, I would, I would I would play that. You know, can't hold me down. Oh, it did it. <laughs> All right, yeah. uh, concert or movie? Movie. Yeah, I gotta go to the movie, bro. Con- that's too many people at that concert. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm a movie. All right, uh, pumpkin pie, or sweet potato pie, sweet potato pie. Who eats pump- pumpkin? Man, <laughs> hey, 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 <laughs> hey, we, hey, man, you, you asking some country, black country. I know country. You know, who, I don't even hey. know if I'm eating a pumpkin pie, bro. Okay. <laughs> to be honest, it's man, don't you bring, hey, 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 a couple weeks, co- a couple weeks coming up too, but nobody bring no pumpkin pie. Hey, over don't here. bring that. It's don't. going in the trash. <laughs> oh, okay. Last one: Super Bowl ring or a hundred million dollar contract? Can only have one. Oh, I'm gonna go with the hundred million contract. Okay. Because you think about it. No, no, no you can't explain. You can't explain. Okay. <laughs> well, I ain't got no ring. But uh, <laughs> you, I but saved my, you save your money. There it huh? is. There it is. That's it. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, get your popcorn ready. Podcast. I appreciate y'all, dog. Randy Moss, my man. I appreciate you, fam. Thanks for coming through, my guy. Hey man, yeah. T.O. Hatch, bro, it's been a pleasure, man. And hey, I, I I mean this wholeheartedly, man. I enjoyed the time we had on this podcast. I'm great to go fishing, bro. When I say that, I feel different, knowing that I had a couple questions answered, man. And and, and I mean it. I don't care if it's the ten plays. Uh, we can get this wide receiver thing bumping. However, we can do it, man. Just let me know how we can how we can maneuver some stuff. But like I say, man, from the bottom of my heart, man, I feel blessed <laughs> to be able to share this time with you guys, man. And I appreciate y'all having me on, man. My man. Yeah, likewise, man. So, again, like I said, uh, I know, like I said, we've, we've talked sparingly throughout the course of our career. And obviously, uh, we both are now in the Hall of Fame. and We've had some conversations and discussions uh, here and there where we've had where we've conversed about, you know, this and that. And so uh, I hope, you know, the people, the fans um, that, are, that are watching – um, that will be will be watching on my YouTube channel and listening to it on the podcast. I hope they got a, a, a real good show today and understand kind of like where we are in our careers and, and how we've been able to evolve as men. And, and really, we, 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 we admired each other from afar. And uh, for me, like I said, you asked those questions, uh, you know, uh, of me and I answered hold heart heartily. And again, like I said, I know probably you probably had some concerns, uh, you know, prior to the show and um, you know, Hatch asked me like, "Yo, you know, uh, Randy want to know this. Randy want to know that." And I'm like, "Bro, I'm I'm cool. I've never really had any animosity, you know, towards you whatsoever." Um, like I said, uh, like I said, all you gotta do is ask me. Hatch know me. I'm uh, no filters, uh, no no holes barred. Um, I'm very outspoken. I say what's on my mind. You'll know if I like you or if I don't like you. So, uh, other than that, the fact that you're on the podcast that just speaks volumes. Uh, for the both of us and where we are in our career and where we really evolved as 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 young guys to where we are now as as men and fathers or what have you. So um, just to extend, um, you know, uh, what we have here on the show, man, we, we appreciate you coming on. I know I've enjoyed this just as probably much as Hatch has. Um, still, I, I, we, we still don't know who's the best. Uh, well, in his eyes, he's going to say you're the best. In my eyes, and like you said, 
you're the best in my eyes. I feel like I'm the best. <laughs> Bro, I hope hey, the fans hey, got to hey, enjoy. I hope, it. I hope I say this right. Hey, Terrell. Did I say yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, hey Terrell. Let's uh, just leave it at that, my brother, because we had a hell of a career. And right. this time that we had on the podcast, bro, I had a hell of a time. Let's just keep it at that, all right? No no doubt about it. I'm the best. There well, let's it, leave it at that. I appreciate you, <laughs> man. All right, no doubt, appreciate man. you, Mossy. Love you, brother. Right, brother. Peace. Well, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you again, Randy Moss, for coming on Get Your Popcorn Ready podcast. Uh, again, I can't thank him enough to come on here. Thank you enough to having a, an open an enlightening conversation, a real conversation, which we like to have here on the podcast. Again, we're not on here just talking football. We're talking about some real life, uh, real situations where, again, you're opening up regarding your feelings, you know, if you will, about the whole Hall of Fame situation and you guys career paths and how it happened. And he did the same as well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I felt like a guest on my own show, uh, <laughs> considering like I said he had some questions to, to, to ask me. Uh, yeah. Obviously, like I said, this is a great forum platform for us to uh, really uh, kind of interact with each other. I think for a lot of people to kind of see us on the same screen and, and I think, you know, answer uh, a lot of questions that a lot of fans have had over the years. And so I thought, you know, he had some great questions to ask and uh, hopefully I, I answered them. So uh, yeah, let's do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Absolutely. This, this is my, my, my Michael Jordan sit down with, you know, Kobe moment, if you will. Because again, is a, there's so, there's so much more, of course, again, we can continue to shoot this podcast, you know, hopefully get to a, another, another, uh, show sometime next year as well. So, but with that, let's get to our three and out segment regarding the Randy Moss episode. And uh, I think number one for me was, um, how he said the first time he really felt like he was on a team when he was with the Patriots because of the, the way the locker room was, right? The, the way mm-hmm. the, when it's a, a game time on Sunday, we got three hours to come together. We don't care what you've been doing Monday through Friday, drinking, smoking, whatever, partying, whatever you was doing. But on Sunday, right, we know that we got each other's back, uh, you know, regarding this locker room. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to let you do all three because, again, I felt like a guest on my <laughs> own show. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think well, you you were able to really kind of sit, sit back and, and take all of this in. I took it all in. I absolutely did. Well, you're going to have to get involved with the number two uh, portion of our three and out segment because it's when, um, when he was watching you all's game when you was with right. Dallas. And right. – you know, because I asked him about when you guys watch each other and like the commentators say certain things like, you know, does that get you hype watching? He's like, and he sat down in the locker room and Tom Brady sat beside him and says, and he's told Tom, he's like, yo, T.O. had four today. And then Tom Brady was like, don't worry. And then <laughs> Ross that night comes back and has a four, <laughs> but in two and a half quarters, you know, so that getting his blood flow and getting him ready for that game, you were the inspiration. And of course, he had Tom Brady to throw to him as a reason that he was able to do that in two and a half quarters. Right. That, bro, that is so crazy. <laughs> and that just shows you how much authority and how much leeway he had within that offense to really kind of just call plays and, and like I said, take advantage of, of a matchup. Because Randy was one of those guys. His, like I said, he was definitely faster than I was. Um, he was one of those guys straight from the line of scrimmage. He's putting that put flag that, Throw that hand up. Right. I mean, <laughs> man, what? He putting that old mailbox. Uh. And like, I'm gone. Uh, so, again, I wasn't fortunate to ever have any speed like that, especially when I play, especially just, you know, from the jump. As soon as you clear, get beyond the defense hand, I'm like, oh, I'm out of here. And that's just yeah. a signal for the quarterback. They're like, yo, throw me ball. So, yeah, um, yeah that was – that was I, I, I enjoyed that story because, like I said, I never really – like I said, I never thought that, you know – he was watching or any of yeah. these guys were watching what I was doing. And, and again, making some comparisons and really trying to really kind of one up me or what have you. So Absolutely. the fact that again, we inspired, we inspired each other from afar. I thought that was a uh, very, very unique to hear. Um, again, like I said, for that game, like I said, I was in Dallas and we had played the Washington Redskins and I ended up scoring four touchdowns. I was like, man, this is crazy bananas. And the fact that they, he saw, he saw, he, cause you know, you're sitting in the locker room, you got the TVs on. Yeah. Yeah. You're you putting your socks you know, on, you're looking up, watching the watching play. The games or whatever. <laughs> and you walk, yeah. See it. See the, the stats go across the bottom. You know, like, wow. Okay. So Absolutely. that was crazy. Tom said, don't worry. 
<laughs> and that's it. <laughs> All right. And then uh, the third thing for the three and out segment with Randy Moss was um, how real and authentic he was when he said he felt down regarding you not coming to the Hall of Fame and right, how right. epic of a, a of a situation it could have been. But your reasoning wasn't behind of no type of jealousy or, or anything. Oh, yeah. Like that Animosity of him. toward him. Nothing yeah. at all. It was, again, how the process was going or had went. And I, again, I didn't know this. So I guess a, a three and out, uh, a three A of our three and out was when you get, you're telling the story and your family and your people are there and you guys got balloons and got all these things to celebrate. And it didn't happen. Like people don't understand. Like that's part of, you know, that moment where you get scarred for life. Like you're going to remember that for life. Your family's going to remember that for life. And that's no laughing matter because somebody turned on the TV and says T.O. didn't get uh, accepted to the Hall of Fame. And some people are going to laugh about that. And then, yeah. but you're going back to that moment where that's not funny. I'm in the car with my people. You know what I'm right. saying? It's not a funny moment. It's a scarring right. moment. But like you said, you've handled it the right way. And for Randy to say, again, feel him feeling down and him giving you props and handling it the right way. Again, that's a great, great, great show today. Great show from, from both you guys today. I'm just, I'm just glad to be a part. I'm, I'm going to add three B to this. And this okay. is probably the first time we had three A and three B. Uh, we, did, we, we didn't mention it, but um, he basically said he would have handled it totally different than Absolutely. I would have. Absolutely. So that was, and that's, that's, I said that's you. I'm like, man, Ross, yeah. <laughs> and, that's, and that's what's so crazy is that, you know, again, the media, for, for whatever reason, um, basically saw him in a better light, I guess, at the end of his career than evaluate him in, in the, the, the entirety of his career. And again, they evaluated the entirety of my career. And as I mentioned to Randy, like I said, when they were assessing, evaluating, and again, they were bringing up all these things as to why um, I shouldn't be a first ballot or even, the, you know, the second time around, Randy had pretty much done similar things. And again, he ended up getting in and I didn't. So, you know, at the end of the day, it is what it is. Like I said, that was so, that was surprising. They, that it, it was, It's so crazy. I, I, man, I would probably, man, I can't go back, but I wonder what he would have done. I he would have, if he didn't get so, uh, somebody would have got somebody would have got cursed out on national television. I tell you that. That's right. <laughs> so, but hey, yes, we are all Hall of Famers. So yes, great ha! show. No, we are uh, not. Yes, we are all <laughs> Hall of no, Famers. Are, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in with the two part series of the Randy Moss Get Your Popcorn Ready podcast with my host T.O. Again, I cannot say enough how you two handled your careers. Uh, again, going line in line with each other. Uh, it was great to watch. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, and fortunately, it's over, but it's not over because we're going to see some verses or some something with you guys is uh, hoping in the, in the near future. Oh, yeah. We're going to get that. We're going to get that going. And we're going to obviously, like I said, I think mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's overdue. And it, and it goes without saying that we should do something, especially with all these, uh, these, these receivers uh, that have looked up to our careers. And if we can sh uh, share some knowledge and create some type of, like I said, fantasy camp, Hall of Fame camp, or whatever the case may be. Um, for me, I feel like, again, because people always ask me about coaching or, mm -hmm. you, know, tr uh, you know, doing, uh, you know, these camps and things of that nature. This would be a great time, not only for myself, you know, as a Hall of Famer, but have two, you know, mm -hmm. two of the greatest Hall, uh, Hall of Famers and players uh, to ever. ever play the game at the receiver position to give back to to many across the country. So we'll, 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 we'll get it going. Absolutely. There it is, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. Randy Moss on Get Your Popcorn Ready Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your Himalaya app or wherever you get your podcast. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel to see the video portion of this at youtube.com slash Terrell Owens. Yeet!